So your mother came back from holidays with recipes instead of photographs. Is that, um, is that habit you've picked up, do you think? Um, yes, but she would come back with recipes that she would, uh, you know, just want to cook because she tasted, you know, and when in the, I don't remember, in the 70s, I think she must have gone, I think she went to Corfu, and then when she came back, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of tarama salata and hummus oh, making. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, that was, and moussaka for a while. But they, I certainly, uh, I, I remember those, those days very fondly. But I do, I mean, actually, it's one of great blessing to me that, you know, you don't have to send your, you know, you don't have to send a roll of film to the chemist to get developed anymore. Because when my children, were quite young. I used to go take everything to the Neil, the local pharmacist, who got everything to develop. And I always used to feel I had to say to him, "Look, I'm really sorry that you know there are eight pictures of a tomato stall and maybe <laughs> one of the children doing something. All my photos are of food." So I do, I do that. I think that if you like eating and you're interested in in um, cooking and the travel is about the food. Um, I will always, you know, I don't, I don't read, I, don't, I never read a guide about where I should, what I should go and see. I just read about the food and the restaurants nearby and uh, go and see, you know, I like going into great food shops or kitchen shops. Yeah, I think you can tell a lot, can't you, about a place by its big market and it's, yeah. When I went to Venice once, and I went and stayed in a, uh, stayed in a hotel, and I just thought, this is just, this is terrible. I need to be here and be able to go to the market at the Rialto. And after that time, I was just said, no, we're gonna we're gonna rent a flat. Um, and that's so wonderful to. I think when you go shopping for food, you really feel like you belong in a place, even if you're just there for five days. And there is something about you know being in Venice and going into the Rialto market, and it's, it's uh, operatic in its gorgeousness. And it, you really can go from stall to stall and, be, and choose such wonderful food, whereas obviously at the restaurants, I like restaurants and I love the theatre of restaurants and I think they can be a real treat. But, but actually, when I'm not... When I'm uprooted from a kitchen, I do feel a bit disconnected from things. You need to go away and recreate that somewhere else. Well, even if I'm not... Re I, don't, I don't really try to, to recreate something I've eaten, but I might think, oh, those flavours were so great. I, um, I'm, I, want to, I want to cook with them or see what ingredients they have that we don't have and then try to, to cook with those. It's just... It's exciting, and as I say, that you know, a restaurant should be there to be a treat when you're on holiday. If that's all the way you have of eating, um, for me, it becomes a way of it, it becomes limiting and expensive. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> a simply Nigella is is full of some of those influences, isn't it? I mean, is it? I think it's Thailand. Yes, I went to Thailand uh, at the end of last year, and it was it was just such a revelation, and I. I've always loved Thai food, but just having it there and seeing those ingredients and actually realising how different it can taste. I mean, I had one thing that was so different from anything I'd had in a Thai restaurant here, and that it's it can be such it can be such a simple way of cooking as well. You need those bold flavours, and you need everything to be. Um, May you know you need to choose the recipes that are going to be uh, the ones you want to cook yourself in your home. I mean, I the you know I ate an awful lot of deep fried food and that is very delicious, but that is not always the most relaxing thing to do at home. <laughs> I mean, I you know there are certain occasions that call for it, and I'm a great believer in small scale deep frying. So you're doing it in a sort of milk pan rather than a huge vat of oil, but nevertheless. Just those simple, you know, new, rice noodle dishes and all those wonderful sharp salads. I think I've got, you know, I, lo I love sourness. Uh, I love all those very bright pickles. They're very fresh, bright pickles. They're not, uh, and the, the bright that pink heat. Kind of ginger. Yes, and the and that and that heat, that clear heat. I love the I love the unmuddiness of the flavors. 
Is that where the obsession with pickling came from? I, don't, I really don't know where, but yes, the obsession with pickling did come a bit, but actually came before. I have a Greek friend and I said to him that what, I just can't stop pickling at the moment. I mean, <laughs> and uh, you know that all conditions come from Greek terms generally, or well, they can be Latin, I can do a bit of Latin, but I'm afraid very poor at Greek. And so I said to him, if I wanted to say I'd become a compulsive um, pickler, what would I be? And he said, you would be a torso maniac. <laughs> so, so that is what I am. I first did it when I what actually was trying to do my version of the you know spring greens or those, and, and I had some cucumbers, and I just. I wanted to make a salad, but I didn't. I wanted it to ha have that feeling of a pickle, and so I did a sort of semi-pickle by just putting a bit of. I, I have for some reason I had some white balsamic vinegar, which obviously is not balsamic vinegar, but still whatever it is, what sugary is vinegar, <laughs> um, a bit of sugary vinegar, a bit of rice vinegar, and some um, some peppercorns, and I think some coriander seeds, and a bit of fresh dill, and I just put the cu cut the cucumber. I always when I peel cucumbers, I do what my mother did all the time, which is um, I do alternate. Lines, oh, yes, right? Because yeah. she always did. I, I just have carried on. So I then cut them in batons, put them in a dish, put a bit of cling film, you know, with that thing, and then go, have a rather good shake of it like that. And I just left it for an hour, and they and they're like the sort of lightly kissed pickles. They're not. They haven't. They haven't really begun to be pickled. But that got me interested. And then when I went to Thailand and saw they had a very easy way of doing peppers, you know, chili peppers. If you just put them in rice vinegar and that's it. But then I realize there are ways if again it's a bit like when I do jam I don't want to make so many you know be ages making jam or making so many pickles that f frankly no one is safe that I mean, when they come to the house they have to leave with some you know there's too many made so I I I like the idea of a very simple pickling liquid that really I could change the spicing or the, how I sweetened it depending on what I was pickling and I had to stop myself I couldn't put every recipe in the book but I and I fear now I'm going to move into fermenting I'm going to be like the, one of those um oh, you'll be burying kimchi in your back garden well, I have got a kimchi pot but I feel <laughs> yes I'm yeah, I feel like it's I'm I'm I'm, I'm not because I am uh, moving into hipster territory, there's no danger of that. <laughs> but just because I do love, I, mean, I do, I love sauerkraut and I love um, kimchi and I do like those flavours. And I feel that I've done the quick pickling and now I want to do the very, very slow pickling. <laughs> um, but you know, when I was talking about peeling uh, cucumbers the way my mother always did, and I, I think this is so much the language of recipes. And there was once. Uh, I can't remember, it must have been the food program, I don't know, but there was a, it was a Radio 4 uh, program and there was a, I think there were three generations of, of women, I mean, it could be men, but they were women, uh, talking about a particular recipe and the recipe was some sort of pot roast and it said, cut off either end of the beef and then, you know, add it in the pan and that and this went on and then you know, the daughter was talking about how she'd done it, but she'd changed certain bits and what, what ingredients she'd added. Maybe she'd added some star in East and slightly different spicing, but she still did the cutting like that. And the granddaughter said, well, I've done it and I've done that, but why, you know, what, why do I need to cut off either end? And her grandmother said, oh, well, I just didn't have a pot that was big enough. <laughs> but that, and I think in a funny yeah. way, that's how recipes yeah. become what they are, but there's no real reason <laughs> you just do it. Yeah. You know, there are certain yeah. things I always will do, just my mother did, and I have no reason, I, I have no reason to do it, but I'm sure my children will cook, and cook those things in the same way. Um, over the years, you've become quite outspoken about the way that food is used to suppress appetite, you know, suppress women's appetites. Um, and in Simply Nigella, you've got some quite damning words for the Clean Eating Brigade. What do you think is most harmful about that? Yes, I feel that... I was very negative about the, you know, the clean eating brigade, but actually it's not the brigade I mind, it's the term clean eating. Because I think the term clean eating makes it seem as if every, any other form of eating is dirty or shameful, and I think that's bad. I, if, look, obviously if you're saying clean eating is not eating processed food, well, like, who's going to argue? Mm. That is obvious. But I do think there is a way in which food is used 
to either to self-congratulate, you're a better person because you're eating like that, or to self-persecute because you're not allowing yourself to eat the things you want to eat. And in, and in some way, I don't like... I don't like any form... I don't like a moral... Uh, moral weight mm. being given to either the size people are or their food intake. And I think uh, that happens an awful lot. And I also think as much as... Look, I certainly uh, feel that I... The food itself, I know that a lot of the people I follow on Instagram um, are the, you know, are vegan, and I find actually vegan food incredibly creative right now. So, do, I mean, of course, now it's not; it's referred to as plant-based rather than <laughs> vegan. But nevertheless, you know, I do think for the first time it's about celebrating vegetables rather than just make. I mean, of course, it was that as well. But I do think it's really become alive and inspiring to those of us who are not vegan. But that doesn't mean to say I think everyone has to restrict their diet um, in a way that doesn't feel creative, but that feels punishing. So I, I, I think if people are using certain diets as a way to hide... Um, well, put most broadly, an eating disorder mm. or um, a sense of great unhappiness and uh, unease at their own, with their own body, then it, then it can be harmful. And it can be harmful while hiding behind healthy food. And I, that, you know, so I think that's important, but mostly it's about the, the notion that people say, I, you know, I, don't, I won't ever eat or I wouldn't eat a, cake, a slice of cake, I'm a better person. And that's not... But I think, that, you know, you've got to be a bit careful around those sorts of things. And I also have to say, and I wrote about this in my book, which is that I'm very... I'm very permissive. I don't make people eat cake. So I'm very... You know, if I make cake... You when, can make me eat cake uh, you know, any time. You know, I don't eat cake every day. I mean, I only make sweet things if I've got people coming round or if it's a special Sunday lunch or something. But... Um, I don't mean them, but all, the people who always say, "Oh no, I don't, I don't eat sweet things," they're always the ones who are left hunched over the cake with a fork, <laughs> picking yeah. bits, and they, ha they eat so much more than someone who's had a slice of cake. Yeah. So I'm all, that is also need, does need to be said. Those people who are like, "I won't have cake, but I'll eat it off your plate." Yes. And I'll eat it off your plate. Um, you're alive. Although it has to be yeah. said that food off other people's plates is delicious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I, I'm not anti the practice. <laughs> and it's like food on planes and food in cinemas doesn't count. No calories in any of that. Well, food and planes, I don't, I'm afraid, yeah. you know, they're, they're not for me. <laughs> I don't know, I don't... You know, the, I actually... Calories is not something I think about. I do feel... W am I putting stuff in my body that's going to make me feel better today? And I can need to be made feel better on any number of ways. So sometimes the food that will make me feel better is, um, you know, is a cup of tea and toast and marmalade, mm. and some of the food that will feel better is sweet potatoes with some avocado and black beans. I eat that an awful lot, actually. Um, for some reason, my body feels that it needs to eat a lot of sweet potatoes these days, and I would, never used to like them, but now... It, and, and, I, and I believe you have to listen to what your body says, and sometimes you have to listen to what just what your mood says. So if my mood says... I need some baklava, that's going to be a good thing, and I'm going to feel better. <laughs> I will eat some. But what I won't do is, is you know, I'm not going to eat the whole box, because I, I will eat what I need and what I want accordingly. I mean, I haven't lost the capacity to overeat, but one of the... There are many, many good things about getting older, but one of the things that isn't good is that you can't eat as much. I feel full up faster. And you stop. Then. Are you good at stopping when you're full up? Um, I say that as someone who isn't. Well, who I isn't. no. I feel that I eat very, very fast. So I'm always miss that moment of full upness and go beyond <laughs> as a natural, you know, just naturally. And I, and I'm, but I love eating fast in the same way as when I read. I read very fast. I think I'm I'm very greedy for everything, but I get to that thing of feeling uncomfortable, especially in the evenings, much mm. sooner than I would like. But I think, in a way, um, 
that, that, you know, that happens in life. And, you know, one of the wonderful things about eating and cooking, I mean, if you're lucky enough to you know, have enough food um, on the table, is that you don't have to worry about not having, you know, not being able to have a second helping of that tonight because there is always tomorrow. And I feel reassured by that. Yeah. <laughs>